Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I want to talk about why we are working more and more all the time towards getting away from plastics as much as is possible. Now, by the time you're seeing this video, it's probably been at least a month since I put out a video showing how I freeze things in mason jars, you know, produce from the garden, the blueberries and the zucchini and various different things, even my apple juice now that I've been pressing from our own homegrown apples. And uh, several people came in and said, why not just use Ziploc bag? Why not just use food saver bags? Why not use the balls, plastic, square, freezer, jam containers? And yes, I used to use all those and some of that stuff I still do because it is real difficult to fully get away from plastics. They do have a place in our lives and they can be acceptable to a point. However, we are overexposed to the toxic chemicals that are in plastics. Now, somebody may look at something like this and this I don't have a problem using, it is plastic. Because my food is not in it for very long, I don't worry about the plastics leaching into the food, the toxins in the plastic. And so this, though I would prefer to have it in a heavy duty glass container, uh, this works and I'm not so worried about that. But when it comes to storing my food in the freezer, no on the plastics. Well some things still yes because i'm still i'm still in the process of working and changing and finding better and new ways to do it so for example when we pick a lot of blackberries i do still like using the big freezer bags for putting the blackberries in because they're just the best right now because i can put a lot in one bag in a one gallon bag and that's usually enough to make a pie or maybe start another batch of jam down the road or syrup or whatever it is I want to do with them later. That's just the easiest way, but eventually I would like to get away with that. Another example is how I freeze my eggs to get us through the winter. Yes, I know there's all kinds of other methods of preserving your eggs, but my preferred method right now has been to scramble the eggs up and put them in the breast milk bags that are BPA free at least. And that way I can put a lot in there. I can put a whole, you know, like 10 dozen eggs away like that and then have enough, plenty enough to get us through the winter when the chickens are not laying. However, it's still not ideal. And I am actually considering next year using the little four ounce mason jars for freezing the eggs in because I only like to freeze them up two at a time. And I think that might be ideal, we'll see. Obviously the problem there is space. The more jars you get in there, the more space it's gonna take up. They take up way more space than using either square plastic containers or freezer bags or food saver bags. That is the major downfall to using glass. However, more and more, we are switching to glass in little steps and other things that I'll talk about more here in a bit. Uh, aside from the obvious health problems with plastic, one of the other reasons I like to freeze in jars and other glass containers is that these are reusable. As long as you freeze things correctly, you can just wash them up and reuse them. Food saver bags are not usually good for more than one, two, possibly three uses. Same thing with your Ziploc freezer bags. Uh, those oftentimes don't make it through one. They may be one freezing and then they're toast. Uh, you can sometimes wash them up and reuse them again, but oftentimes once they've gone through the freezing process, they become brittle and they get holes in them and then they're no good to use again. So. I am constantly looking and researching and doing other things that to make it both more frugal so that I can have something that I don't have to keep re buying and replacing all the time, but also something that's going to be more healthy. So some people will, will look at the fact, well, this is BPA free and that's good. That's a place to start. But any plastic you use is going to have some kind of toxin in it. And when those items are frozen or heated in that plastic, 
you're going to get leaching of any of these toxic chemicals. You know, phthalates is another one that's very dangerous. And what I'm gonna do, cause I don't wanna get fully into all the science behind this, cause this could be a really long video. And it's a lot easier for me to just direct you to a video where there's a doctor that has been studying all this stuff and all the effects uh, genetically and all that down the road and so I'm going to link to a video I just recently listened to and I'm going to listen to again real soon up here and down below it's really well done it's over an hour long so you can get all kinds of information in there that goes beyond just plastics but a very well done video you just you can't trust just because something is labeled as food safe or BPA free or phthalate free that it's totally safe um, again, we have to kind of balance out. And I think we have to just, sometimes we have to make our changes when cutting back from plastic to look out for health purposes in little steps at a time. And that's what we've been doing. And one of the first changes I made was I used to put Patrick's lunches, you know, when he was working outside the home in containers, in different kinds of containers where he could take them, usually plastic, and I would freeze up like leftover dinners and stuff and put them in these plastic plastic containers and then he would take them to work and by the time they got to work they were mostly thawed out and then he'd stick them in the microwave and and heat them up wow how horrible that is. that is one of the worst possible things you can do because the freezing process breaks down the plastics as it is causing it to leach into your food and then to turn around and heat it in that same plastic in a microwave on top of that is going to make even more problems and cause even more leaching into the food and so i got away from doing that and i invested in a couple of packages of these where i had lots of the smaller ones the square ones like this were the perfect size for his lunches and then there's the whole pack came with both the round and the square and there's also a size smaller than this now the lids are still plastic but for the most part the lids are not touching the food and when you go to heat it anyway you're going to take the lid off and these things are leak proof they're really great these are the glass lock snapware containers and i recommend them highly now the same set that i got is no longer available but there are many sets out there that are very similar you may just want to get the small uh, ones like this you might want to get the bigger ones i also have in the set i have has a bigger even bigger square container that's great i use that for putting my cheese my blocks of cheese in so i don't have to wrap them up and then there's also the Pyrex containers. And I recommend these. These are better for like, you know, bowls of soup and stuff like that. But if you don't want to invest in these, you can still use your mason jars, use them in the fridge, use them in the freezer. It's just that when you go to freeze them, depending on what you're freezing, especially you want to take care with how you're freezing them, wrapping them up in fabric of some kind. Again, go check out my video on how I freeze in mason jars. But it, mostly I'm just trying to approach these questions because a lot of people are like, well, why don't you just do this? And why don't you just do that? Now, I used to have a whole bunch of those little square plastic uh, ball containers, ball brand, and it doesn't take long for those to start breaking down. I mean, they start cracking. I toss them all. I got rid of all of them, but I used to use them a lot for freezer jams, for freezing. Uh, when I'd get those big cans of olives, I'd put those in there and so on and so forth. But again, it's just another thing. A little bit at a time I've been trying to get away and I have many more areas where I'm still storing food in plastic that I'm trying to deal with but mostly when it comes to the heating or the freezing is where is where I'm doing most of my focus on or any kind of cooking don't use plastic spoons when you're cooking anything like that all that kind of stuff I used to have got tossed so here are some other ideas that you can use such as wrapping your food instead of using a plastic wrap maybe you can't afford to invest in something like this with a nice lid on it or you have something that uh, is going to fit in a bowl you can put it in a big bowl but you don't have a lid for that bowl then you can also make your own waxed fabric now i have an old dark video i did on making my own waxed fabric and though this isn't ideal in all cases it is very helpful sometimes you can simply find a glass plate or ceramic plate or corel 
which is what I prefer. And you, if the bowl is the right size, find the plate that will fit. Just put that plate right over the top of that bowl. And that's another easy way that you can both save money on plastic wrap and get away from having that plastic touching your food. So there's another thing. Now, when it comes to water bottles, get away from all the plastic water bottles. Now, this one's pretty old and beat up, but it's still good. I mean, so when you buy stainless steel water bottles, look for the ones that um, if it matters to you, you're just better off going with the ones that are just not painted because the paint always flakes off after a while. But we invested in several of these for keeping in our rigs. And one thing I find is that having the water stored in these, especially with a little bit of colloidal silver in there, and then put in the kept in the rigs, uh, the water stays fresh and, and tastes great coming right out of these, where if you put your water in plastic bottles, you store plastic bottles of water in your rig for emergencies, that's going to get hot, cold, hot, cold, and you'll know it when you open that bottle of water and you go taste it. It tastes like plastic. You need to throw it out because all those toxins have then leached into the water. So if you can taste the plastic, you know you're drinking that plastic. And so one of the big issues for me, one that I've been trying to figure out how to get around is I don't have, I all the dehydrators I have are all plastic because I bought almost all of them. I have four total. The very first one I got at a years and years ago before I knew anything about plastic at a um, auction for a really good price. But then since then, I've found three more that ranged in price from $3 to $5, and they were all either brand new or only used, been used once or twice. So it was such a good deal. So all my dehydrators are completely plastic. And the thing that really bothers me about that, even though the food and herbs and stuff aren't necessarily on there for a long time, they are being exposed to heat and the plastic at the same time. Now, just because it says BPA-free, and or phthalate free doesn't mean these things are not getting contaminated by the plastic that is being that it's sitting on or in and so i've been trying to think through this now i only use those dehydrators during the time of the year where we're getting enough sun to keep our battery bank charged up with our solar power and then i run the electric dehydrator on the solar power because obviously thus also the time of the year where it's warmer we're not going to be having fires but the best way the healthiest way that i like to do it is to dehydrate on these stainless steel racks that we managed to find in the uh, the sporting goods where they have like smokers and things like that and we managed to find these i've looked for these online and i can't find these particular ones these ones i like because they have a very fine mesh so you can put a lot of things on these but you can also find some uh, just cooling racks and what what i dawned on me that i could do recently is that if i'm dehydrating things that are tinier i either use a cook a, a baking sheet a stoneware baking sheet like for my grains after i soak them and then i go to dry them and i'll lay that on top of the rack that patrick built for me now i have a video that he did on making one of these racks i'll go ahead and link to up here and down below so he makes the racks out of old bed rails and then we he made them to fit these particular cooling or these particular racks. These are actually dehydrator racks. So whatever you can find, and if you can, you know, you have a, someone who can build it for you or you can do it yourself, then you can just slip these right in here. But you can see some pictures right here of the rack in use. Depending on what I'm drying, it either sits on top of the wood stove. Most of the time it sits next to the wood stove because it doesn't get as hot there. Usually if I'm doing meats, like making a beef jerky or something like that, then I put it on top of the wood stove so it can basically cook it and dry it at the same time. It's going to work a lot faster that way. But for more delicate things, I set them next to the wood stove and it tends to dry quickly enough there without worrying about overheating the foods. So anyway, you for smaller things, just set a piece of clean cotton cloth. Make sure it's 100% cotton. It's going to breathe better and it's going to be healthier for you. And then you can put your smaller things. So in this picture right here that I'm showing you, I've got some beans drying. And on the bottom two racks, you can see the cloth. What is on there is the pulp from the apples. I ground up the apples, you know, using my manual. This is all food processor right here. Put them in my apple press and then took uh, most of it, not all of it because it's a lot, 
um, and then put the apples on those those trays and I'm letting them dry next to the wood stove that way so I don't have to use my electric dehydrator now that I've got a fire going. But with that in mind, it got me thinking because this is one of the things that's been bugging me the most is all this plastic. So I'm still gonna have to come up with a method for when I like to make my tomato flakes because this method I'm gonna talk about isn't gonna work real well for that. But. But anyway, I took the fruit roll-up tray, and what I did is take that same cotton I was showing you, and I used it as a template to cut out these round pieces like this, so that I can either lay them right on there, or right on the thing like this. Now, I don't think, I don't actually believe this is going to fully keep the, the plastic from, uh, totally keep it from leaching into the foods but i do believe this is going to be quite helpful doing this so i can lay whatever that you know anything that's not like super wet so for example i've got you know calendula flowers they the the pieces tend to fall through there a lot so having the cloth once they dry you can put a whole flower on there it's fine but once it's fully dry the petals start to fall off and fall through here or even through the stainless steel rack. And so having a cloth to kind of keep it all together, then you can just roll it up and then dump it into whatever you're gonna dump it into once it's dry. So this is one option I'm going to start using when I do the electric dehydrator. Um, though I'm probably pretty much done with my electric dehydrators for the year now that we're into building fires. But I did make quite a few of these, of these little donut shapes to go in the electric dehydrators and so Next year, when I start dehydrating more herbs and stuff using that, that's the, what I'm gonna do. I think that will at least help. Uh, the other thing is maybe somewhere down the road we'll finally invest in just getting a good dehydrator that has the stainless steel racks in them already. So when I'm doing a lot of dehydrating during the time of the year where I don't have the wood stove going, I can do that and not have to worry about the plastics, you know, getting heated up and then the toxins from that leaching into the food. Couple things I do want to talk about that uh, some people might look at this like, well, that's kind of crazy because there's no way you can totally get away from all these plastics no matter what you do. So why bother making any changes at all? Well, that's because every little bit that you do counts. So for example, Patrick and I, as a lot of you know, we were on thyroid medications for 15 years each. And little by little, we made changes to our to our lifestyle, to our diet, to everything, to the way we stored our food and all that so that we could better be able to just eliminate the pharmaceuticals from our life and just live healthier. Because the reason so many people are on so many different medications is because the constant toxins we're exposed to all the time. And the more you can limit that, the better your health is gonna be. Now, we have, our bodies are made intelligent, they are made to detox. However, if our livers are so full of toxins because it cannot keep up with the way we're being exposed to them all the way around. Okay, so let's just talk about some of the same toxins that are in your plastics are also in many other things that you're exposed to. They're inside the canned goods, inside the cans that you buy from the store has often got those same toxins in it. They're uh, on the receipts that you handle at restaurants, at your local stores. Uh, they're also even in sunscreens that a lot of people use. So now you're putting it on your skin, it's going directly into your bloodstream through your skin. Plus if you're freezing and then heating your foods in plastics, then now you're exposing it to even more. And your body simply cannot keep up with that much and it's going to become overloaded and then it cannot properly detox. So the more that you cut out of all these different toxins, the better your body can deal with the ones they are exposed to that you can't entirely help. Sometimes you just gotta take things in baby steps. Start with one thing, focus on, okay, like for us, one of the things that we did was we eliminated drinking city water because of the fluoride, because fluoride takes a very horrible toll on your thyroid, and that's why a lot of people have Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. And so we got away from the city water, we started collecting our own, own rainwater and filtering it and storing it in glass jugs. I have probably about 
36 glass jugs full of water I'm constantly cycling through so that I always have plenty on hand. Now, unfortunately, the system that we made is plastic buckets, but the water is not in there for very long. It's not being stored in there for very long. It's not being overly cooled or overly heated. I'm not worried about that. I would prefer someday to go completely stainless steel, but to get like a, a Berkey or whatever, those can be really expensive and I want a big setup. I don't want just some little thing. I don't want to spend $300 on a tiny thing. I want five gallon buckets at least, because I like to have a lot of water coming through all the time because we go through a lot for cooking and, and drinking and things like that. So anyway, we store it in glass jugs, not in plastic. Uh, same thing with the colloidal silver. We recycle these. My son likes these uh, uh, sparkling cider. He likes to get this in the, you know, Thanksgiving or around that time of the year. And so when he buys himself some when it's on sale, he gives me the bottles. I'm always recycling them. So, and one of the things I use it most for is storing our colloidal silver. It's glass. I don't have to worry about the plastic leaching into the colloidal silver and thus you know, kind of counteracting the benefits of the colloidal silver. Plus they're dark. And so that's going to keep, you know, so much light from getting in there and, uh, and, you know, degrading the colloidal silver. So there's just a few examples of what we do to help cut back on the amount of plastics we have. And it's still a work in progress as I'm sure it is for most people. But again, the more you do, those little baby steps you take, the more you do, the better you're gonna be in general. So I wanted to make one more mention about this whole overexposure. What we can call that is, as Dr. Bergman always says, a death by a thousand cuts. There is actually something called a death by a thousand cuts. So if you cut yourself a couple times, your body's going to be able to heal itself. You cut yourself a thousand times all over your whole body. It's too much. Your body cannot keep up with that many cuts to heal itself and you will likely bleed out. So that same principle applies to the amount of toxins that you're exposed to. Your body can heal from a certain amount, but it cannot heal from a constant exposure all the time. So everything that we do, because we've got toxins in our air, there's toxins in our water, there's toxins in a lot of the foods, especially if you're still buying a lot of your store-bought meat, especially anything that is pre-packaged at the store. Lots of toxins in there. It doesn't matter if it says organic. Uh, you can go to the store and buy a package of baby carrots, quote unquote, packaged in plastic that say organic. And those are some of the least healthy things for you because those baby carrots have been chemically treated to peel them. And now they're packed in plastic to top it all off. You're best to grow as much as you can yourself, but that's not feasible for everybody either because of the location, their space, or their physical abilities. So you just have to do the best you can. Every little bit counts. And nobody's gonna be able to get it all figured out and to be able to do it and be completely uh, free of all toxins. You just have to tackle what you can tackle. Every little thing that you do, to better your health and better your situation is going to help you out. And so the more you can eliminate the plastics from your life, the better you'll be. Just don't freak out about it if you've got a food processor that's plastic or a few other things, as long as you're making the other necessary changes. Get rid of all your plastic cups and plates and stuff like that. You don't need plastic cups and plates. You can go ceramic, glass, or even bamboo for any of that kind of stuff, and you're gonna be a lot better off. Okay, well, I hope this video helps you understand and steers you in the right direction. And again, if you want to learn more about the science and some of the discoveries they've been making, and there is, they're still learning all the time about the dangers of plastics, then I recommend you go listen to that video. And this is more focused just on health, not even just about what the plastics are doing to our environment, which is bad too, but at least just looking at your own personal health and the health of your family. That's just really important. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.